Hello everyone, my name is Tao Yan. Today we are going to share our research about how to pawn IS and the secret server with the vulnerabilities in Microsoft Jet database engine. Our topic is give me a secure injection, I shall pawn IS and the secret server. The name of this topic is from the famous Greek scientist Archimedes. He has a famous assertion to demonstrate the principle of the lever. Give me the place to stand, I shall move the earth. I would say pawning IS and the secret server is as difficult as moving the earth. We both need a precondition. Here's our agenda. We will firstly introduce why we do this research. And then we will introduce what new discoveries we found in IS and the secret server. After that, we will show examples to prove our discoveries. At last, we will summarize the whole topic. Who are we? We are security researchers from Palo Alto Networks. We have spoken at many different security conferences, Black Hat, Kensag West, Blue Hat, Recon, etc. We are also regular top vulnerability contributors for Microsoft, Adobe, Apple, and, and so on. Let's start from the motivation and the background. Our research started from these three questions. New attack surface in IS and the SQL Server. Can we do more with the SQL injection? Who can use Microsoft JET database engine? We will show how we connect these three same unrelated topics together. Attack surface in IS and the SQL Server are very limited, especially for memory corruption vulnerabilities. You can see in this figure, the last memory corruption vulnerability in IS appeared in 2009, over 10 years ago. Attacking IS and the SQL Server directly is much too difficult. So what if we have a SQL injection in, in advance? SQL injection can be used to ex execute an in, uh, intended SQL queries in target database. Usually, it is used to uh, view data in the database, especially in access. For more powerful database like SQL Server, it, only if you have high database privileges in the SQL injection, otherwise you cannot execute shell commands. Even more, you cannot execute a native code in the web app application or database process. But if there's a vulnerability in database engine, we could get that capability. It's easy to bring the JET database to the stage. Firstly, it's very old and not well maintained, but still massively used. Secondly, it is native supported on all Windows versions. MS JET 4.0 is installed by default on all Windows versions. So the next question is, who are using JET? Since there's a vulnerability in JET database engine, it will also be affected. The first option is Office. Office supply an interface to let users to, to link an external data, database source, but it is not ideal target since, uh, firstly, it cannot execute SQL queries on the uh, new linked data, database file. Second, the protective view mode of Office will mitigate the external link, link source. The other option is WScript, but it is not, not also an idea target since it can only crash WScript locally and it did not break the security boundary. What about access and SQL Server? Since we have known JIT is the default database subsystem used by Microsoft Access, so it is possible to use vulnerabilities in JIT database engine to attack IS and SQL Server by executing any SQL queries on remote controllable database. The answer is yes. Now we come to the main dish 
we will introduce the new remote remote attack surface on IS and the SQL Server. Um, this chapter will detail what the new discovery is, how SQL, Ser how SQL injection connect SQL uh, IS and the SQL Server with JIT Vener JIT database engine. Let's say the cross database SQL query in access and uh, SQL Server first. In access database, it's very straightforward. You just need to put external database before the table name. In SQL Server, there are three ways to do that. Open data source, open row set, and link server. In each way, you can uh, set external data database to the data source parameter, database parameter, date SRC parameter. Access use JIT provider by default, so it will use uh, MSJIT 4.0 to do the cross database SQL query. Is it possible to use JIT to do cross database query in SQL Server? The answer is yes. You only need to set the provider with these strings, JIT 4.0 or SAE 12.0 or 6.0 to let SQL Server with the related JIT database engine to do the cross database SQL query. It is very interesting, right? SQL Server can use JIT database engine to do cross database SQL queries. Assigning the provider with uh, uh, and using MSJIT to do cross database query in Access and SQL Server is not enough. If external database can be on the remote server, that will be a very powerful capability since the uh, the attackers can control the database file remotely. In the document, we see both local file system and shared network folders are supported. Let's check the code. In MSJet 4.0, there's a function named error try open database is responsible to parse external database. If we set a UNC path, and it will uh, check if it is a foreign database and go to different branches. And you can see MSJet 4.0 module, MSRD, and MSXL will be called. But finally, all different code branches will call create file to open the external database file. Similarly, in MSJet 12.0, it will also call create file to open external database. Usually, Windows use SMB to parse UNC path in most applications. But there's a hidden feature for create file with UNC path in IS and SQL Server. It both use SMB and surprisingly, also use WebDB. You can see it firstly will connect 445 and 139 port with SMB protocol, and then if filled, and it will connect 80 port with WebDB protocol. Very interesting, right? If we set up an SMB server, it works on Windows 7, fills on Windows 10. We guess there might be some mitigations to mitigate SMB, um, NTLM, harsh leak issues. If we set up a WebDB server, IS and a SQL server successfully get the external da database file from the remote WebDB server. It works all uh, on all Windows versions. WebDB and SMB are not our story. You can see there's a more feature in MS Excel for zero. And you can see there's a 
uh, net protocol type function, it will check if the input is a FTP protocol. If yes, it will call net download to local function to download the remote database file from the FTP server. This function will call APIs in WinINet to communicate with the remote FTP server. You can see um, IS and SIG server connect 21 port with FTP protocol. After we know access and SQL server support cross database query and external database can be on the remote web DV server, let's see what will happen about cross database query in SQL injection. This is a typical SQL injection case in access. You can see we in we use ID to inject or customize SQL query. After the injection, both original SQL query and the injected SQL query will be executed by ASP code. Let's see how IS and ASP deal with the injected SQL query in IS process. The functions in ASP will call module VB script, MS ADO, ODBC32, and finally it will call try open database to open external database. As we, as we just introduced, this function will call create file finally. This is a typical SQL injection case in SQL Server. Similarly, we also use ID to inject or customize SQL query and uh, both original SQL query and injected SQL query will be uh, executed by ASP code. In this case, we use uh, open data source as an example, and it set the provider with, with um, SAE 12.0 to let the SQL server use um, MSJ 12.0 to do cross database SQL query on the uh, remote database file on the uh, WebDB server. Different with the access case, it is a SQL server process that deal with the injected SQL query. If we use JET 4.0 as a provider, you can see SQL server will use JET open database function in MS JET 4.0 module to open external database. Finally, it will call query file. If we use JET 12.0 as the provider, you can see SQL Server will use functions in ACE core to open external database. Finally, it will also call create file as we showed before. Let's summarize this new attack surface. It grant attackers the ability to execute any SQL queries on any attacker controllable database in IS and SQL Server based on a SQL injection. It means vulnerabilities in JET database engine can be used to attack IS and SQL Server. So we do fuzzing based on the mutations on SQL queries and JET database files. With this strategy, we have found around 100 vulnerabilities. It's a huge gold mine. Hope you can find your own vulnerabilities to attack IS and the SQL Server with this method. Now we come to introduce three attack scenarios under this new attack surface in the real world. In each scenario, we will detail the new attack surface impact and the requirements, as well as show the examples of vulnerability details, including the demos. First scenario, IS and access. In this scenario, all set up I by default, except you have a second injection. And all uh, JET 4.0 components are vulnerable. 
and you only need one single web request to cause IS, US, Infolink, or RCE with the same privilege of the IS process. Although you can only use select query in this scenario, but it, it is good enough to find the vulnerabilities. Let's see an example. You can see only one select query is injected uh, with the second injection, and uh, it will execute the second query um, on the remote uh, external database on the WebDB server, and it successfully ca caused the IIS crash. Let's analyze this vulnerability briefly. Um, you can see EAX is from the ESI plus 3.4 offset. ESI is a table mover object, and the record address set the value at the offset 3.4 of table mover object. And if this function return one, the code will go to the branch of accessing the invalid memory and cause crash. Please keep it in mind, we'll introduce it later. Comparing the uh, memory dump of table move object, mover object before and after, you can see record address uh, function will set an invalid value at the offset 3, 4. It's, uh, you can see here, uh, it is uh, an end address of a heap, right? So record address is responsible to parse record information from the database. You can see uh, it is the record information from the database, and uh, this field will be parsed to calculate the length, but it did not check the equal condition, right? Since the length is equal a zero zero after the calculation, it did not check. So the code will go to here to set the invalid value of the uh, uh, three, four offset. This is not uh, the worst case. You can see here, eight zero, eight, uh, 4800 will make the, this function return one, and the, co the, the code will go to the uh, invalid memory access code branch and cause crash. If the word value is C800, and it will make the function return three, and uh, the code will call set error, and then no crash happens. So you can see only one byte change can cause IS crash. If C8 in original file, there's no crash. And uh, there's, if, if it is uh, 4 8 byte, it will cause crash. This is the first time you see the power of the database file mutations. Regarding to the select query, nothing special. So let's see the demo. Firstly, it's a web server address and it's RS process. We use WinDebug to attach the RS process. And then execute this web request. And then we can see this is a external database file on the remote WebDB server. And we execute the query in our browser. And OK, IS crashed. Scenario 2, IS and the second server. In this scenario, 
there are two cases, 32-bit and 64-bit. Uh, In 32-bit, second server, all JET components are vulnerable. In 64-bit, second server, only SE core um, means uh, the JET 12.0 is uh, vulnerable. In second server, all SQL queries are supported. No restriction about the SQL query. And uh, if the ad hoc is turned on by default, if the ad hoc turn on and uh, you don't need any database privilege in the SQL injection, public is good enough. Also, you only need one single web request to cause SQL Server DOS, um, Infelix, or RCE with the same privilege of the uh, SQL Server process. Here is an example. You can see we injected uh, one query update, and uh, we use open data source to let SQL SQL Server use MSJet 12.0 to execute this SQL query on the remote uh, database file on the WebDB server and successfully cause uh, the uh, SQL Server process crash. Some information of the this vulnerability. You can see EDI is an invalid value, and it is um, um, it is from this object. Comparing before after, we see the um, before something happened. The this value with the uh, yellow color is valid, but something happens. This value is overflowed. And we can see uh, also 00, zero become 1B, 1B. There mu must something wrong happens. Let's see further. This small piece of code is uh, responsible to update um, some values in the memory in a loop. In each loop, it will add the memory value with a fixed value 1b. In each, um, the loop count is 3e. So let's investigate what the correct loop count. You can see here the, val the values with yellow color. It, after our investigation, it is the column value from the database file and uh, it should be updated. But the values with red color, there are some memory pointers over there. It should not be uh, updated. So the correct loop count should be the hex 28, but the actually uh, loop count is 3e. So there's out of boundary right happen. Where the, the loop count 3e from? Is it controllable? Is there any check? Let's see. No check at all. You can see the loop count 3e is defined in the database file. And it is read directly from to this memory structure. And the code read the loop count 3e directly from this memory structure and do the loop. So if we set 3e with a big value, then more content in the memory will be out of boundary overflowed. So this is the second time you see the power of mutations on the database file. This case is more complicated comparing the first one. You need to do the mutations in the two positions. In the first position, you need to set the valid column information here. In the second position, you, you need to set a 
a value larger than uh, two eight to make the overflow. Regarding to the update, nothing special about it. Just update the uh, SQL query. Let's see the demo. Web server address, uh, SQL server process, and uh, we use WinDebug to attach the SQL server process and execute um, the SQL queries with the SQL injection. Okay, uh, we successfully caused the SQL Server process crash. Th scenario three, IS and a web shell. Usually if you have a web shell, you can execute a command with a command module in the web shell. But, but sometimes there are uh, mitigations and uh, restrictions to prevent web shell command module execution. In this case, native code execution capability is important since it can bypass any uh, restriction or mitigation um, in the memory. So you can use JIT vulnerabilities in the web shell to get the native code execution capability. In the web shell case, all uh, JIT components are, are vulnerable and uh, all SQL queries are supported, no restriction uh, for the SQL query. And you can use a database module in the web shell to trigger. Here is uh, an example. You can see we set provider and we set, we set data source and execute those four SQL queries in the web shell one time. And then successfully cause the IS crash. Pay attention the crash point. There, here is a call EX. Very interesting, right? It's very close to uh, exploitation. And we we can control the EX to uh, to to four one zero four one zero, and uh, if we put the hip spree and and uh, it will execute um, arbitrary code in the IS process. Some. Uh, briefly analysis uh, for the vulnerability. And you can see EX is from ECX. ECS, ECX is the page description object. And uh, the zero offset of this object is the V table. And after something happened, you can see the V table is overflowed by a string. This string is exactly same with the string in the update SQL query. Very interesting, right? Let's see what happened. There's a memory copy over here, and it you the size of source buffer at the copy size, you see? No check for this size. No validation, no verification, just copy directly. It's a very classical vulnerability pattern. Let's see more about the destination address and the buffer. The destination buffer size is the 1000, but the destination address is from the offset BCC, so there are only 434 bytes left, but the copy size is 44E from the source buffer. So there is overflow happened. 
just right after the destination buffer, this is a page description object. And we can control any value and just exactly overwrite the page description object. So this is the first time you see the power of mutations on SQL queries. You can see only one update can cause an overflow, but those three SQL queries make a successful hip layout to make the page description object right just right after the destination buffer. If you want to also do a, a successful hip, hip roaming, I suggest you uh, uh, execute multiple SQL queries in one database connection and uh, also try cache is necessary in the web shell. Let's see the demo. Also the target address and the IS process. Same, use window bank to attach the IS process and execute those four SQL queries. Yeah, the external database on the WebDB server and, and uh, execute. Okay, I asked crash at the call EX, very interesting. A short summary for vulnerabilities in three attack scenarios. They are very old, over 20 years old. It, work, it works from Windows XP to Windows 10. They are not hard to exploit since uh, there are no or weak mitigations. For example, no CFG at all in MSG at 4.0 components. The damage is severe since a successful exploitation can execute any code in IS and the SQL Server process. Since IS and the SQL Server has the SE impersonate privilege capability enabled by default, so it's easy to use token kidnapping technique to escalate the privilege to system. So it is possible from a second injection to remote system. Let's summarize the whole topic. WebDB, is it a feature of vulnerability? It's always controversial. Actually, WebDB opens a new world for attackers to remotely attack IS and the SQL Server. We reported a lot of um, JIT vulnerabilities to attack RS um, and the SQL Server to Microsoft. Microsoft will patch the vulnerability one by one or patch this WebDB feature, we will see. Second, backwards compatibility. It is very friendly to users, but it always brings security issues together. Third, defense and mitigation, especially for systems which are no longer supported by Microsoft. I would say pay more attention to WebDB, disable outbound WebDB traffic on your server if you don't need it. Next time when you see a secure injection, think more about it. There's a one more thing. Uh, we want to discuss the security boundary. When you report a vulnerability to Microsoft, they will ask you how and what security boundary it breaks. We reported um, a lot of JET database vulnerabilities to Microsoft in the past several months. Sometimes Microsoft reply not break uh, the security boundary, either close the case or keep pending the cases. What's the essence of JIT vulnerability? Think about it. From our perspective, it makes SQL query execution equal native code execution. 
it is a very powerful capability since there are a lot of systems components using JIT and allow SQL query execution. In today's presentation, we combined SQL injection with WebDV, bring SQL query execution capability to IIS and SQL Server. It means we can get the native code execution capability in IIS and SQL Server with JIT vulnerabilities. This is a remote attack surface. The security boundary is from SQL injection to remote system. How about the local attack surface? Think about it. We leave a hint here. It may become a part of our next Black Hat talk. Before the end, we want to thank our colleague, Jibin. That's the end of our presentation. Uh, Thanks for listening.